In the last video, I showed how you can create conditional lists in Excel using the index function, and also how you can create a conditional dropdown that depends on the selection from another dropdown. And in both cases, I used the index function, and the reason I did that was to show you other uses of the index function and to use the second argument for the index function that uses references and area numbers. It's just because most people are used to thinking of index together with match, and this is just showing that it does have other sides. It can do a lot more. Now, um, there were queries on other functions that would work in this situation and the advantages and disadvantages of the other functions. So I just thought I put together some functions that I would normally use in this situation and talk about the advantages and disadvantages. One function that can be used in this situation is the offset function. So if you're not familiar with the offset function, I have a video on this one, so don't forget to check it out. I'll put the link to it in the descriptions. Now, offset can be a bit of a tricky formula because it has a lot more arguments than the normal Excel functions. What I'm making in this case is a list that when I switch this from one to two, I get the apps in each separate cell here in Excel. And then I'm going to show you how we can make a dropdown that has all of them in the dropdown. And it's conditional based on the selection here. As a first argument, I need the reference, and that's my starting point. So I'm just going to select this one. So on this cell, I just want either this one, this one, or this one. Now, in the next argument for offset, I need to decide how many rows I want to move down. I don't want to move any rows, so I'm just going to skip that. Now, how many columns do I want to move? Well, the column one is what is dependent on this selection here, right? So I need to select it, and I'm going to press F4 just to fix it. For the height and the width, I just want one back, so one cell back, and that's the default, so I don't need to specify that. Now, what happens when I press Enter? It's here, it's giving me fighter, I actually want Venkal. Why is it giving me this? Because it's moving one over, so that's one. So actually, when this is one, I want it to be zero. And when this is two, I want it to be one. So I have to deduct one from this. And now, because I've done my fixing, I can copy this down. I'm going to press F2, Control, Enter. Okay, that looks good. Let's switch. That looks good. Okay, so now let's try to get the dropdown with the offset function. First of all, I'm just going to type my formula in a cell. And when I'm sure that it works, it's how I want it, I'm going to copy and paste it in the data validation box. The first thing is the reference. Now I want all of them. So I'm going to select my full list. How many rows do I want to move? I don't want to move down any rows. Skip. How many columns do I want to move over? It's exactly the same concept. This minus one. And I can skip the last arguments. Now, you can't put all of these in one cell, right? So I can see it, though, if I highlight it and press F9, I can see the full list. It's just showing me the first one. I'm going to press Escape, and I'm going to copy this. Press Escape, go to Data, Data Validation, and let's see if I can directly paste it as a formula from a list. And it accepts it. Okay, it's right there. Let me just switch. And it's right there. Okay, so that seems to work. And that's using the offset function. Another way is to use the choose function. With choose, you need index numbers. It's kind of like a condensed version of if. And the condensed version of if needs these index numbers, and the index numbers have to be like one, two, three, to decide which number to return first. It works perfectly in this case because my list selection is one, two, three here in this dropdown. So I can use that as my index number. So I can select this. I'm just going to fix it because I'm planning to pull this down. And my value one 
So if this is a one, what number, what category should it see? What should it see in this cell? It should see this. Then value two means if this is a two, what should it see here? It should see this. If this is a three, what should it see here? It should see this one. Okay? So those ones I can leave dynamic references. So they can be relative. I want to pull them down. And the first one, the index number, is the only thing that I have to fix. So F2, control enter. Looks good. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to use the same concept for my data validation dropdown. I'm just going to write it first in Excel. So that's mine. Then I want value one. So now again, just like with the offset, it's not just one thing, it's the full reference list. My value two, if this is a two, it should give me this list. And if it's a three, it should give me this list. Okay, that's it. Let's just double check with F9. Looks good. Press escape, copy, press escape again, data validation, list, and paste it here. And just make sure that it's there. Let's go to three this time. And it's there. Okay, so now let's check one thing before I move on to the next one. What happens if I add apps to this list, especially to list one? Does this automatically update or not? The only way that it's going to dynamically update is if I transfer this to an official Excel table. And I can do that by going in any cell here and pressing Control T. Then it asks me, does this table have headers? Yes, it does. I'm going to add a new app here. Let's see if it shows up here. It shows. Now, the last one that I wanted to show you was a quick one on indirect. How to get the drop down using the indirect function. Now, indirect can be a bit of a strange function to get a hang of. So I'm just going to type a1 here and show you what this does. Okay, so I typed in indirect, I referenced the cell, and I get index for dynamic lists because that is what is written in cell A1. So the cell that you reference to in indirect is basically the cell that holds the address of the final destination. Now the address has to be a valid address. A1, it recognizes it. You can also give it in row numbers and column numbers, so R1C1 format, but you can also give it named ranges. It takes that as an address too. So if I turn these into three different name ranges, I call this list one, list two, and list three, and I have a drop down that says list one, list two, list three, and I use the indirect function, that should work, right? Well, let's find out. So to give this quickly a name, I'm gonna to go to formulas and select create from selection. Now, this is the create names from, so, the name that I want to give each list, I have to select where is that name. So my names are in the top row. Just select that. It has then created three lists with these names. Now all I have to do is to create my drop down, my first drop down. So data validation. And that's my drop down. Now all I need to do is to go to data validation to list and type in indirect and reference this because that's an address. Okay, and list two, that's the address for list two, which are these names. Does this update automatically when I turn this into a table? Let's test.
It does. Because I'm going through Name Manager again, so Name Manager automatically expands the range when I turn this into a table. Now the only thing that you might have noticed when I use the indirect one that's different to the rest is the table headers. You see here I have a space between list and one, list and two and so on, and here I combine them together. Because Name Manager is picky on the names that you can give to ranges. So you can't have spaces, you can't use numbers, I couldn't put one, two, three directly in those cells. Indirect works well here, and it's a fast way of getting the dropdown if your dropdown name is the same as the name of your ranges. If not, then you have to make adjustments to indirect, then it just becomes too complex and it's much better to use the other solutions that's here, for example, the choose function or the offset function. Okay, so these are different ways of getting conditional dropdown lists. The downside to the offset and the indirect function is that they're both volatile. So if you have really large spreadsheets, they're calculating all the time and they could make your spreadsheet slow. But in the setup that I have right now, I'm pretty sure they, there is no difference between them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you learned something new, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated and get notifications when new videos like this one come out.